with uh, security for Ron Gillen's holding facility. So this is the facility that he has. And this right here is just his house where he lives. It's just shed and whatever. This is a barn just full of stalls. He's got a tack room in there, arena, and then he's got uh, runs and such areas for his horses. He does have like signage of the warnings and liabilities and such for his arena. All right, what he's doing well. He does have, you do like a health check and a coggins for when you come onto his facility and you're boarding with him. In the contract that he has you sign when you come onto his boarding facility, it is stated in there that when you leave or move, you do have to clean out your stall or run or wherever you've been with your horse's stuff. Um, there is the signage around saying the liabilities and such. And then he has like flags around town promoting his facility and that. The things that he can improve, like I said, he does have you do like a, a health check and like a cognizance and stuff. Essentially, the people who come to the school normally have that done already when they bring their horses onto camp. his own set of like deworming and vaccination rules so that if somebody isn't going to bring their horse on campus they still have to have a set list of things that need to be done. Um, again like he has you clean all of your area that your horse is. He doesn't have you to like disinfect and I think that that would be nice and help if your horse is just a carrier or something as and such. And I talked to him about outbreaks, he's never had an outbreak, and so he doesn't really have a protocol for that. I think that it should be like maybe even like stated or mentioned in like a contract or something that's well known saying, hey, if, if something happens, this is what we do, kind of a deal. Again, if you go back up, everything's kind of right next to and close to each other. There's a lot of nose to nose contact and such. So I think that if there is kind of an area off to themselves, besides inside of the stalls, that they can be isolated if they needed to, I think that would be helpful. Um, and along with that, like if there was an outbreak, there's kind of like no traffic, no in and out traffic, that it could be helped and such. And go. <laughs> Okay, so I did mine on watchman stables training and boarding. This is where I take my horses when I'm in Lincoln during show season and I board them here. Um, it's a full care facility in Lincoln, meaning the cost and the board and all that is equated into the feed that they feed, the hay, and all the care so you don't feed your horse. So they do all the cleaning and all the feeding there for you. So this is an overview of it. All this is pasture. There's also a pasture over there. That's in the fall, so it's a little bit muddy. Otherwise, there's grass there, and if grass dies over the years, she'll replant grass every year, so the horses always have grass to graze on. Um, that's one of the premium stalls, and this big barn over here, the premiums are eight fifty a month, and the basic stalls, which would be in this barn and this barn, and then there's a barn right back here, those are six fifty a month. So the only difference is with the premiums, you have a run and they have their own personal pasture to go out to versus with these, they share pastures and the barns with other horses. Um, this is a viewing area over the indoor arena. It's like directly located above here where this picture's taken. And that is the indoor arena. And she has two round pens on the facility and an indoor and an outdoor arena along with wash racks and wash bays. So basically, um, this facility is located at Lincoln. Um, these are just some of the amenities it has. It's two 60 foot outdoor round pens, 100 by 200 foot outdoor and 80 by 60 indoor. Um, 
heated indoor wash bays are temperature controlled. There's viewing rooms and um, the premium stalls are 12 by 16s and the basic stalls I think are just 12 by 12s. So it has a lot of amenities. This is one of the best places to go in Lincoln. It's, you know, you pay for what you get. So it's a great place. Um, one of the reasons I recommend it is for biosecurity. She does a great job with traffic horses. Um, if you go back on the beginning of the screen in the very back left corner is where horses are quarantined for 30 days. She tries to do 30 days, but sometimes it's ending up two weeks. And before you're even allowed on the facility, you have to, um, submit a form to see if she'll even let you board at the place. She has really strict standards. So if you've had people from places you've boarded before say you don't feed your horse very often, she won't let you board there. So you have to fill out um, a form and submit it and get approved to board before you can even board there. So she's really good about that. And all horses are quarantined before they come in. You must have at least a minimum of a six way vaccination and a minimum of deworming twice a year as well as the Coggins. Um, let's see. But even though she does do a screening process sometimes, like for example, there was a boarder last year who was pretty slacking at bringing in grain for her horse. So she, out of her own pocket, paid for supplements and grain for the horse and vaccinated him and dewormed him while these people were not doing that on their own. So quarantine, she usually does it for about 14 days. She tries to do 30, but before they can even come on the property to become quarantined, she does a health screen and that cannot just be a piece of paper that says I vaccinated my horse. It has to come from a vet clinic. Otherwise she will not let you on the property. So all horses that are new, um, the pens back there in the left-hand corner are divided and they're about 120 feet away from all of the other horses. So they're all a safe distance away. So the minimum that she requires for you to be on the property is like five or six way, which has the, you know, the flu, rhino, triple E, the WEE rabies as a suggested as precaution since this facility is not far from a wooded area. She suggests to do rabies. Um, she suggests that you do any, every spring and fall and boosters are optional. There's a farrier that's on site every single week and it rotates between three different farriers and there's a different one on site each of them. Deworming, she does it, she has you do it every single, every three months to be as a precaution and it is changed four times a year to, you know, prevent from developing immunity to the dewormer and, and if an outbreak occurs, any horses exposed or affected, that means if they're within 40 feet, they touch noses, or if they have it, they will go to the quarantine pasture back in the left-hand corner, and they're there between 20 and 30 days or until a vet clears them to be around other horses. All boarders that come on site or anybody that comes on site has to sign a liability waiver ride or even be on property so before you can even have your horse on property you have to sign a liability waiver and you have to have a vet check and have all that stuff into her before you can bring yourself or the horse on property uh, traffic so since this place has two an indoor and an outdoor arena a lot of people pay her to come on site and ride so she makes outside money by allowing people to come in and ride on her property and they have to go through the same screening process and sign the same things that all boarders would sign. She has um, one of those signs outside of every single round pen in every single arena. And every single arena and round pen um, has double chains on it to prevent anybody from going in and out that shouldn't be there. So um, all staff members are required to wash their hands with handling horses. So I used to work there while I boarded there and if you would do grain for one horse, you'd have to sanitize before you can do grain for another horse and in between barns, that way you don't transfer anything if there's possibility. Um, you also have to wash and disinfect after you clean the tank and before you clean the tank. And um, anytime you're going in between horses. So here's some more pictures. These are the basic stalls. This is where I keep my horses and this is just a picture of the pasture. This is in the fall, so like I said, she's always got grass in the pastures, and if there's not grass, she'll at least plant it. All, all, all round pens and arenas are 100% sand, so they're really nice. Um, each pasture comes with 
Main two and shelter and let's see if I can go back and find them. They all have hay huts in them. Each pasture has four hay huts and they all have four feeder nets on them to eat out of. So is horses that come in and ride. Um, he just lets them use a printed version of their biosecurity versus something directly from the vet, like borders at board on facility like I did. Um, a vet had to email it to her. You can just print it off and show that you had your horses vaccinated. So I think she should be a little more cautious about that given the amount of horses that are in that area. So it's really high traffic, so it would be smarter to get a better piece of biosecurity for oncoming horses. Yes. Okay. So I did my biosecurity project for Fisher Ranch um, in Erickson. Uh, Fisher Ranch is a large breeding and like very large scale breeding operation, and they have really large sales. They have two brown sales every year. They have hundreds and hundreds of brood mares at their place, and probably like 20 studs with this fancy company that's that are very well known. Um, I chose to do my biosecurity project for Fisher's because it's not very far from my house, and I go there often. I go to their sales, and um, I've done a project with Fisher's before, the marketing project, and I talked to Gary, their secretary, and she kind of makes my run, so she's easy to talk to. Um, they have a lot of horses that come in and out, and this project really opened my eyes because I found out that they literally have absolutely no biosecurity. And so I was a little shocked. My, like, Steve pretty much told me that, oh, they survive, they survive, and whatever. She didn't really care. So that was really shocking. So this is their the whole entire place. Um, this is the main place where like the arena's out there, the sales, and the indoor arena that's really new, and this is the outdoor arena. Uh, these tiny little pets you can see are all caged by my mix, and they sell to them, and that's where all the brood mares and the bulls are at uh, during the sale in the uh, fall. Uh, this is a place up here where they usually they keep it off limits when they have the sale, uh, but I assume that they probably live up there, and they have them here, and there's pens everywhere, but I just leave them in. So these are the cell pens for milk, milk on. And um, this is the one that's blocked off. Um, I've never actually been there, but obviously they have a ton of rooms, and I assume that that's probably where Stud was kept. Um, and if not, they were not kept in the indoor arena. This is the main place where the sales are. Um, this is a super duper nice indoor arena. It's ginormous, and inside there they have a row of stalls that are huge and that's where they like advertise all their studs during sales so all the studs are kept in their pens and a few sale horses that can be pent outside with other horses for whatever reason uh, this is where they'll have all the mares and babies at and there's these gates open so they can run the whole thing so that you can bring your zoo in you can just walk around here they look down here and then these are all pens that they man-made kind of just and stuff, so if you're confining a horse, you just keep it down there. Um, obviously, the outdoor arena where they have like roping freebies and um, events there, and obviously dog pens. And you know, these have barns where you see there's more pens here. And this is where I know they keep all the brood mares because when you're driving up the place, you can see all the brood mares around there. So, like I said. Their biosecurity is kind of crappy. They don't really have anything. Um, so the, the ones that they do have in place, it's not really biosecurity. It's just their coats off the ground horses. Uh, the only thing that outside horses have to have is the current negative toggins, but they don't require it. Like they don't ask to see it or anything. They just kind of say she has it. Um, I know the same thing with sale. Then you have to have all the paper submitted um, so that the buyers can have the papers on hand when they. Uh, pregnant mares are vaccinated for rhino at five and eight months gestation, and uh, as we know, they should be vaccinated at three, five, seven, nine, and then full six months and full full, or three to full full. So this is really cool because not only will it not force them to get well, but it's not 
there is not a big enough effort at time frame to find any that way to go together. Um, schools are back then for strangles. Uh, Sherry told me that they have a strangles vaccine that is made specifically for what they need, so it only really bites certain strands of that of strangles. That's what she said. I don't really know. And their vaccine is about a three to five month old. Um, so they don't really get any immunity for anything else. They have vaccine for anything else before they're sold at the sale. So they have to sale with eight high level workers. They don't really have a whole lot of protection. Uh, scrubs are vaccinated with the five way once a year before they breed. And that's it. Uh, they do it every single once a year. Also, she was like, oh, that's because they would be able to get that many vaccines if they could get one of them. Um, so like I said, she told me they're very old school when it comes to that, so they don't have protocol for outbreaks. She said if they have an outbreak, she knows one thing they survive through it or they won't, and if they don't, then she said she doesn't want them there because she only needs a couple workers. So what changes do I make? Uh, probably a little bit of everything. Um, I think the school has really good uh, security in place, and I think that a uh, facility like Skipper is very large and has a large about traffic coming in and out, they need to have at least a five-way cholera agents every year, strangles, vaccine, run out of negative coggin, and all those things should be on file and at least every year, because when they have these events, it's usually the same people at every single one, you know, so. If they have those things on hand, then if there is something that happens, they can try to track where it came from and stuff like that. Uh, also, the personal horses, ranch horses, including the studs, and their especially, they should have a five-way strangled vaccine, start negative cognitive at least once a year. Uh, rabies, ranches back in three, five, seven, nine, where it's just these people foaling instead of just five and eight or two, whatever. They should at least be getting a five-way vaccine, available at K3HD1, four, and anything like uh, an idea of worms, strangles, especially with stunning horses. Uh, for protocol for movement, like I said, they don't really have anything. They just kind of move them when they're ready to go. Uh, when the sale comes up, they literally drive everything in on pulling doors or a couple people will be lift back and they just kind of haul. They just they don't go slow or anything. They just take the sales and go up to the main place and wherever they end up, as long as they're in a pen, that's done for them. So pretty much all the mares are kept in the same pasture near each other. As, as many as the pasture can hold. Um, the pens, like I said, are all open, so they just kind of roam around together. Um, the, at the sale, these pens here are right next to, even over here where those ones that I showed, there's like 12 of them, and they're big, but they're real small. And those, the man made skulls are right, or pens are right behind there, so if you have these pregnant mares, they're right next to these ones that's coming in, and I mean, they're all together, so if there's going to be an outbreak, it's going to happen really quickly, and everyone's going to get it because they're right next to each other all the time. All the pens are completely connected. Even the bottom of the studs and all the stalls are connected, and that's where the one horse needs to be the front row when they're going through the sale range. So there's no set protocols in place. The only time the mares are moved is for the sale. Um, she didn't really say where they keep the studs. I assume because they're kept at like a high scale vet because they're sure they're really nice. Um, but she said that when they're there, they're usually kept in the stalls. Um, so then the protocols and signage. Um, again, there isn't any. They had, I think when I went in there, they had one sign in their new indoor arena that says any farm personnel is not liable for inherent risks or whatever. Um, that's not signed anywhere. So other than that, they have nothing. Um, but she said they haven't had an outbreak for as long as she can remember, and she said they don't plan to have to anytime soon, but they're not telling us that very well, I think. Uh, there's nothing that said there's any oh hell yes, or <laughs> he's really awesome. So, but who knows? So again, survival of the fittest, they either survive or they don't. She said they don't really isolate or quarantine anything. They have a sick horse or a wound horse, they just throw it out there and hope it builds an immunity and survives through it, I guess. She also said they don't really check their mares hardly ever. 
if it's all your fault. It's not. They're all everyone's self. So I feel like the care you be able to receive would be super great and just touch on our pasture and you know, they he said that it's so expensive that when you have four hundred bears, yeah, it's gonna be expensive, but that's kinda of part of it. So I think that's all I have, but yeah, mine was a little bit different than your guys' because your guys all had really good protocol and mine had absolutely none, so I didn't really have a lot to go off of, but it's a very much outbreak, so that. Crazy E Ranch in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Um, they were established in 1984 and have been involved in quarter horse and thoroughbred racing industries ever since. Um, but then in 1989, Lazy E purchased the world champion Sire Special Effort and began to receive recognition as one of the top quarter horse breeding operations in the country. So this is some of their facilities. They have two facilities basically, or it's Three if you count their arena. But for horse wise, they have two ranch sites. Um, there's their breeding facility and also their training with the yearling farm. The breeding facility has 300 warring acres. They have 65,000 square foot of um, foot for their barn, um, 116 stalls, two foaling stalls, an indoor arena, 40 individual stalls with runs turnout paddocks um, and they're capable to have 120 hairs under lights and also they have housing for 14 studs and about like 15 miles of PVC um, fencing. And then of course their training facility for their weanlings. Um, they don't have much, they don't really talk a lot about their yearlings because they're really really interested in their breeding facility. But their training facility houses 120 sale prep horses in three 40 stall barns. Um, they have, also have an underwater treadmill barn. Um, they have turnout paddocks in the yearlings. Um, the yearling farm has 36 stalls, pastures and paddocks for the weanlings, yearlings, and the year-long um, resident mares. So to talk about their biosecurity, um, when I looked on their website, they didn't have a lot. They just kind of talked about like what their mares had and like the outside mares. Um, so. What they require was a copy of the mayor's registration papers. Of course, there would be negative cognage within the last 12 months. Um, their current vaccination should have like basically the five way, but flu, rhino, sleeping sickness, tetanus, strep, and West Nile. Um, but also the lazy E ranch um, deworms and vaccinates for flu and rhino every 60 days for the mayors. Um, the last dates they also require for some paperwork from the mayors. Their last dates is deworming, barrier, and as well as dental work. And also for the brood mares, they want their last culture and biopsy results if they are available. And if your mare is insured, they would also like that as well. But if these mares do not come with their records um, onto the ranch, they kind of really frown upon that. And so usually um, if they aren't there, they will do the procedures for you, but that will be at the owner's cost. Um, they vaccinate the foals. Um, basically, all the vaccinations are done right away. They didn't have a specific on um, what they're vaccinated for, and some of, and also after that, um, some of the vaccinations just depended on what the owners wanted on, on their horses. So again, there wasn't a lot um, on their website. So I ended up interviewing Hunter Christensen, who did her internship. I think it was not last summer, but the summer before. So I interviewed her about some of the stuff, if she remembered anything, and basically a lot she told me was everything was disinfecting. They disinfected like crazy people, basically. But when horses were brought in, um, there was of course disinfecting of all the stalls, disinfecting of the trailer. The horses were basically quarantined. They didn't share water, no nose to nose contact, because their stalls were so tall with that and cement walls. You didn't really have to worry about that. Um, as well as when the horses would come onto the property, they would go to the office and basically check in with the people at Lazy E, and then they would, um, it, then they would like kind of do like health check almost, see if they have all the paperwork, and if the horses looked there was something wrong or the paperwork wasn't all there, then they were put into the mare barn, which usually didn't have mares at the time because they were kind of out in pasture, I believe. Um, they would put them in quarantine for a little while until all the paperwork and whatever was going on was better. Um, but then when the horses were being moved after the sales, um, if the horses, let's say, got sick during the sale or before the sale, the Lazy E would take care of it and, like, of course, treat it. But let's say you just bought the horse and it came down with the sickness the next day, 
that is on you. That's not Lazy's problem. They don't deal with it anymore. Um, and then there is their preventive protocols. Um, they, like I said, they disinfect like crazy. They disinfect their buckets once a week. Again, no shared water. Um, and also the horses have like their own syringes, their own halters, like everything is basically, they really, really like to, um, of course they have their own records and the records are very, very specific. And also their um, identification tags are just like little collars. So like every single horse has their own, basically their own records and the collars help a lot more with identification. Um, and then of course their outbreak protocols. I believe from what Hunter told me, they have not had a had an outbreak yet. But of course they go into quarantine, and then um, of course as need to be walked. They don't get put on the hot walker anymore. They are walked individually. Um, they also and also everyone has to wash their hands. So it's not just the horses that need to stay clean. It's also the people. And again, disinfecting. Like some of these horses, they have their own personal grooming, their own halter, just everything was all that horse's things. Um, and also, again, no turnout, it was all walk. Um, and then here's some other re um, related charges that they had. Um, this was on their website. So as you can see, some of the things they wanted, like the rhino, flu, sleeping sickness, and then of course like the culture and strep and things like that. But again, they didn't really make it specific on what they truly wanted from outside horses or even their horses. Um, here's some of the resources. And like I said, I um, interviewed Huntra, which really, really helped me a lot get to know a little bit more about OZ. But something, so again, I think they're doing really well with all their disinfecting. And they're very, very watchful with what their horses are going on. But what I think they should change is, again, they're very vague on what they're like, what their vaccinations and everything are. So I think they just need to be more specific so then when people get there, they actually have more of an idea of what they want and things like that.